It's week seven of the NHL season. Guys are slashing each other in the head. We got line brawls going on and guys are giving the league a giant middle finger. The season is out of control. So let's cover everything that happened in the NHL this past week. Boston and New York faced off to determine who would be the temporary king of the NHL and the Rangers made a statement by beating the Bruins 7-4. Kreider and Panarin came up big for the Rangers, picking up three points each to help the Rangers take over the top spot in the league. But the big story was Jacob Truba two-handing Trent Frederick right to the head. Now Truba all week has been an absolute menace. He had a shift from hell where he just became a one-man wrecking crew and made the Flyers look like a bunch of toddlers trying to fight their older brother. Then this guy gives Frederick a whack to the head with his stick. That one right there should have been a suspension, but the NHL gave him a hefty $5,000 fine with no suspension whatsoever. Just another fantastic call by the NHL, but they've already been on a roll this week with some of their other decisions. Now, before the season started, the NHL updated its guidelines and basically restricted players to wear anything promoting causes of any kind on the ice. This included things like cancer awareness, military appreciation, and the pride movement. So when Fleury wanted to wear his native mask to honor his wife, the NHL threatened to find him. So he did it anyway. A giant middle finger to the league from one of the league's premier vets. Now things got really out of hand between San Jose and the Canucks as we had ourselves a good old fashioned line brawl. Elias Pettersson who's been laying the body this season catches a shark with a hit. Teammate doesn't like it. He steps in on Pettersson and now you got this beautiful mess. There isn't a lot of this anymore and it's because the hate in the league just isn't what it once was. but. Nothing's better than when there's just pure chaos involving all 10 guys on the ice. The Canucks would go on to lose this game to the Sharks, which is just embarrassing no matter which way you spin it, but even though they've been a pleasant surprise this season, the analytics have people skeptical of their success. The numbers suggest that they're riding a PDO high and will likely regress from the luck that they've been getting earlier in the season, but really, only time will tell. Losing to San Jose isn't a good look though. Keeping it in the West, it was announced that the Blackhawks forward Corey Perry would be away from the team for the foreseeable future. Now there's really no clarity as to what's going on and the Blackhawks really haven't said anything about this, but it's just a bizarre situation from top to bottom. The Blackhawks as a whole are so bad and things got even worse this week when they announced that Taylor Hall was out for the remainder of the season due to an injury. On the bright side, Bedard is scoring at a pace that is among some of the greatest players to ever play the game for a rookie. And he's doing all this while playing with virtually nobody. If he can somehow find a way to score 40 goals with the current talent that is around him, I can't imagine what he'll do to this league in just a few years. Now, if there's one situation that is fully out of hand right now in the NHL, it's got to be the Edmonton Oilers. You got the best player on the planet showing his frustration. The media and Twitter refs are beefing over the questions that people are asking McDavid, and it's just gotten ugly all over the place for the Oilers. Mentally, the Oilers' top dogs are going through it right now, and we made a video this week breaking down how things have gone so bad structurally for them but this team still has the talent to pull themselves out of it. It might seem grim right now, but they did have a 5-0 win against the Caps, and that's something that they can draw some confidence out of heading into the next game. Speaking of the Capitals, they are just another example of how weird this entire season has been. If you were to tell me that they would be one of the hottest teams in November and have the worst ranked power play in the league, I would have never believed you. For as long as Ovi's been around, he and that power play have carried the Caps, but lately, it's been the goaltenders of Charlie Lindgren and Hunter Shepard who have willed the Caps back into the playoff race. They still can't score goals, and Ovi's goal scoring pace is certainly concerning. And just a fun fact, I accidentally auto-drafted Ovechkin as my first pick in fantasy hockey this year. And of course, this is the year he finally picks to slow down. Ovi did call out the young bucks of the NHL and basically said that him and Sid saved the league. He essentially challenged the new generation to come in and prove him wrong, but honestly, he's completely right. No one lived up to the hype in hockey more than Sidney Crosby versus Alex Ovechkin, two goats who gave it their all against each other in their primes of their career. Now, if there's one team you should probably start to fear, it's the Tampa Bay Lightning with a healthy Andre Vasilevsky. Vasilevsky was cleared this week after having back surgery in September 
and the Lightning completely dominated the Hurricanes in his debut. This game was an 8-2 spanking, but the Bolts were the first team in NHL history to score at least 8 goals on 14 or fewer shots in a contest since shots were first officially tracked in 1955 and 56. Kucherov had 6 points, Braden Point had 5, and this team was absolutely buzzing. Now there was a report this week that the NHL All-Star Game Fantasy Draft may make a comeback this year. And that means someone needs to sign Phil Kessel immediately. Actually though, this is a fantastic idea. All-Star Weekend usually sucks and it's boring and cringy. And these moments have built some hype and some funny memories over the years. Like who could forget when Ovi begged to be drafted last so that he could get the free car and then was pissed when he got picked. That's the type of stuff that fans would prefer to see over some of the current stuff that they have at the All-Star Game. Now remember earlier in the season when McAvoy got suspended four games for this headshot? Well, the Florida Panthers remember, and Nick Cousins got his revenge on McAvoy with this huge hit. Ever since that playoff series last year, every matchup between these two teams have been incredibly fun to watch. Both teams are better than everyone expected this year, and another playoff matchup between these two teams would be absolute fireworks. We also got arguably one of the best first NHL goals that I've ever seen. Rookie Zach Benson goes between the legs and goes shelf bar down. Absolutely ridiculous for your first NHL goal. Jordan Eberle may want a word for the best first NHL goal of all time, but this is just ridiculous confidence to do this as a rookie. Honestly, this level of confidence and skill is the standard for young players coming into the NHL nowadays, and the skill of this league has just gone off the charts. Big shout out to this ref Tyson Baker who dives to save this player from hitting his head during the scrap. Just an all time heads up play. The Columbus Blue Jackets continue to lose games and bench their star players. They bench both Patrick Laine and Johnny Gaudreau in the final 10 minutes of the third period in a game against the Coyotes. Then they healthy scratched Patrick Laine and as you could have guessed, that obviously did wonders for his confidence. The Blue Jackets have had a tough go to start the year with the whole Babcock thing, but this is slowly turning into a disaster. As a new head coach in the NHL, Pascal Vincent is bold benching these players. It may spark something and set a precedent, or it may derail the situation even more. Line A responded with a goal the next game, and we will see how things carry over over the next few games, but things could get very interesting in Columbus if the losing continues. Now, I know none of you will believe this, but after taking over Sweden, the Toronto Maple Leaf Cup Parade is officially cancelled. Back-to-back losses to the Penguins and the Blackhawks, and Matthews and Marner have been so incredibly mid that it's got Leaf fans heated once again. Two points in the last six games for Matthews and three points in the last seven for Marner and both got shut out in Chicago and Pittsburgh. That just ain't good enough when you're making $11 million. I wouldn't be too worried though because a small winning streak of two games would probably mean that the cup parade is once again back on. So what did you think of this week? What do you think is the biggest storyline in the NHL right now and so far this season? Drop a comment down below and if you want to catch some of our deeper breakdowns from this past week, click on any of the videos on the screen here. We got some bangers on tap for this week coming up so make sure you subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications so that you can be the first to watch.